Just ask the Lord and invite him in here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory and honor for who you are. And we ask you tonight, Lord, that in this place, that you'll have your way. Lord, here next to this creek side, we pray that the living waters would flow, oh God. Lord, that there would not just be another meeting, but tonight would be a divine encounter. Lord, we pray that you'll anoint every song that is sung, every word that is spoken, and everything is done. Sit upon your prophet, upon your man, Lord, as he speaks the word tonight. 
Let the glory of the Lord fill his mouth. Let the power of God fill his spirit and his soul. And Lord, let the words that come forth tonight be words of edification for the body that bring us to a new reality of serving you. Oh God, tonight we pray that somehow, some way, under this tent tonight, that the lost will find their way to an old-fashioned altar of repentance. Uh, that those that are in need of a miracle tonight will leave here with a touch from heaven on high. And we thank you for it. Those, Lord, that are needing the power of the Holy Spirit to be released in their life, uh, we ask, Lord, that that would be activated. Uh, that your perfect will would be done uh, in Jesus' holy name tonight. Most of all, we want to lift you up. Uh, we want to glorify, we want to magnify, we want to magnify and exalt your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight and we praise you. Amen. And everybody say it, amen. Amen, and amen. Let's go back and say, well, in the name.
all your cares on the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he cares. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Well, thank you, Lord. I feel something now moving in this tent. Hallelujah. But old old song says a woman tried many physicians church and I had a unique situation when I was growing up because uh, my grandfather was an old line holiness full gospel Pentecostal preacher 
And my mama always took me to his church on Sunday mornings. And uh, they shouted and danced and just, you know, they had church. You know how uh, full gospel folks do. But his wife, my grandmother, never would leave the Baptist church. She wouldn't go with her husband to the full gospel church, to the Pentecostal church. Uh, so I, my mama split her time between her daddy and her mama. She, we would go on Sunday mornings to the full gospel church, and we'd go on Sunday nights to the Baptist church. And I'll never forget, there was always something different about the music at the Pentecostal church. <laughs> But there was one song I remember the little church mothers used to sing in the Baptist church. And I'm going to sing just a little bit of this tonight. Some of y'all won't even know it. It goes way back older than you guys are. Uh, but there's an old song that says, We're floating down the street.
feel something now moving in here. Oh, shakamaka. Come on, somebody, just reach your hand to heaven. Let's just give God, hallelujah, just a little bit of time here. Just real quick, real quick, before the man of God gets ready to come here in just a minute.
God. Come on, worship us. Help me right here. Then sing. yourself a preacher and you ain't saying nothing or you don't have a legitimate anointing, trust and believe she's she's going to be that individual that's going to sit there and look at you like you're crazy because uh, she's not just going to amen any old thing. And she's a woman who values the anointing of God. So I thank God for Sister Drennan. Can you clap your hands for this woman of God? of the Drennan family. I appreciate all of them, all the whole clan. Well, in this day and time, you probably don't want to use that word, so. Uh. <laughs> but then again, you got a whole good old mixed family, so it doesn't even matter, so, you know, we good, we good. Amen. Thank God for all the men and women of God tonight. We're going to the book of Mark. 
the book of Mark. Familiar passage of scripture, but if you'll bear with me tonight, I'm going to hopefully draw out some things from the text that will illuminate your spirit, awaken your mind, and challenge your faith. Is that all right? So whatever device you have, whether you have your actual physical Bible, whether you have it on your iPad, your cell phone, whatever you got it on, pull it out now and go to Mark chapter number 6. And go to verse number 45. If you would remain standing for the reading of the word of the Lord. Mark chapter number 6. Verse number, beginning at verse number 45. Mark chapter 6, beginning at verse number 45. Says he straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them <laughs> toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he came unto them walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Don't be afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. Thus far the reading of the word of God on your way down. Can you do me a favor and help me to bring emphasis to my message tonight and share these words with a neighbor around you? Say, get ready. Get ready. Come on, say it with some abulience and excitement. Get say, get ready. Get ready, ready, ready. For an unconventional move. For an unconventional move. Get ready. For an unconventional move, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. First of all, let me say I thank God for another opportunity. It's been a good minute since I've been under a tent, and I hope it won't be my last time being under a tent anytime soon. Bishop, I like this kind of stuff right here. I love the tent. Because you never know who might be listening under the sound of your voice. Your voice carries throughout the whole area. And some people got nervous because it was raining today. But I was excited. I was excited because I believe that the rain that happened today was for me a sign of great things that are coming. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing I have learned about God, and I want you all to hear this, is God is always introducing new aspects of himself to his children. He is always introducing new aspects of himself to his children. I think back on Exodus chapter 17 when the people of God were thirsty, they needed something to drink and they were out in the wilderness. God tells Moses to strike a rock. God have mercy. He tells Moses to strike a rock and by striking this rock when Moses obeyed God here we go when Moses obeyed God water came streaming out yes. of the rock and gave the people what they needed. But then, ladies and gentlemen, we run down to Numbers chapter number 20. Moses got in trouble, but God gave him. They were in a similar predicament, but in the similar predicament, God did not give him the same instructions. 
I just said something right there. Right. Sometimes you're going to find yourself in similar predicaments than what you've been in yes. in, times past, in times past. But you've got to be careful because yes. what if you're not careful, you will think that you're supposed to move in one way and God is instructing you to move in another. Yes. God have mercy. Yes. So we run the risk of, if we're not careful, getting stuck in one way of doing yes. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when God does this with his people, I feel like preaching tonight, Bishop. Oh, yeah. You messed around and pulled something oh, here. Yeah. Ah, when God does this with his people, his tendency, what he's doing is actually showing you how grandiose and giving you a grandiose picture of how big he really is. Mm. Somebody say, God, help me see how big you really are. Yeah. One of the biggest dangers for any believer is to get stuck in the belief in what God was yesterday. Yes. Long, I said one of the dangers is getting stuck yes. in the belief of what God was yesterday. Yes, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. But one of the yes. joys that I have found yes. about the God that we serve is he's always got new facets of himself that he's just waiting to show to you. Yes. Am I talking to anybody right here? He wants to show himself in new ways that you have never seen him before. Not only, Bishop, do we run the danger of getting stuck in one way of doing things, but we also run the danger of getting stuck in one particular move. Lord, help me right here. We run the risk of getting stuck in one particular move. It drives me back to the New Testament, Bishop, when we find that they go up to the Mount of Transfiguration. And when they get up on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Bible said Moses and Elijah showed up on the mountain. And, they, and Jesus was illuminated on the mountain. Peter was up there with them. Peter, James, and John went up the mountain with him. Now, Peter thought himself to get a good idea idea and said, well, because Moses and Elijah had showed up, let's build three tabernacles. Can I work tonight? He says, let's build three tabernacles. Well, the mistake that he was making was what many of us make. We get stuck in an old moon. God, I feel it right there. See, the danger was when he was trying, he said, let's build the tabernacle for Moses. Moses represented the law. He said, let's build the tabernacle for Elijah. Elijah represented the prophets. But when it all came down the, down the pike, ladies and gentlemen, when God spoke from heaven, he said, look, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Ladies and gentlemen, many times we get stuck in a move. We get stuck in our denominationalism, preach Lord. We are stuck in our denominations. Well, I'm Baptist and I do this and I'm Pentecostal and I do it this way. But ladies and gentlemen, God wants us to see that there are different facets of him. No particular denomination can contain all of who God is. No particular denomination can contain all of who God is. One thing I've noticed about my Baptist brothers and sisters, you mentioned them tonight, they are good at soul winning. They are very strong with, with calling people into Christ. They do a strong job at that. So we thank God for our Baptist brothers and sisters. Listen, I, I watch a lot of times the AME church, and the AME church is all about education, which is a great thing. You need to have some education. <laughs> the day is over for us being being fools up in the pulpit. I said it, and before I back down, I'll add more to it. The day is over for us being fools and not knowing anything in the pulpit. Now, let me tell you why that is. Because you've got people who are sitting in the pews while you are preaching, and they can Google what you're saying. They've got cell phones and iPads. They can check you out and fact check you right while you're preaching. Yes. So you don't need to be ignorant when you stand behind this sacred desk. But let me go even further. One thing about God, God Rabbi Shia, one thing I understand also about God is that even when we talk about the educational side of things, he wants his people to have a little education sometime because it will help you to step into other avenues and other venues that you wouldn't normally be able to step into. God 
needs to be able to bring his people into the banking industry, into the finance, into entertainment, into basketball and football. He needs to be able to bring people into various areas of the world. And you need to have a little education. I wonder what would happen if we had God and some education. Now, everybody ain't going to get an education. I understand. That's okay. But what I'm saying is you can't dog uh, one particular denomination and, and praise another denomination. And then we got our Pentecostal folk that get all excited because we got the e equalable shot, the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Yes. And we try to act like we are the spiritually elite because we can speak in tongues. Come on, I, don't, I don't have a talk back church We try to act like we are the spiritually elite Because we speak in tongues If you act like you're better than your Baptist brothers and sisters Let me wake you up to something Every person that names the name of Christ And walks with Christ Whether they speak in tongues or not Guess what, when he comes back They're going back with him And I don't care if you don't like it I'm going to preach the truth. The Bible did not say that the pre pre qualification when you get into heaven was speaking in tongues. Do I have a talk back church? The Bible said the prerequisite for getting into heaven, as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. So those that are sons of God are the ones who have received him. So Peter... Peter says, let's build three tabernacles. He said, no, God says, no, don't do that. Let me just set it down on one thing. And the one thing we're building on is Christ. I heard, I heard, I heard the old hymn. There it is right there. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Oh, God said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Can't get stuck in an old move. I want to be in a now move. Somebody that's with me just declared, I want to be in a now move. I want to be where he is. I want to be where he is. I want to be where he's moving. I want to be where he's touching. I want to be in the now move of God. So, I'm working my way up the hill, I promise y'all. But now, the thing that gets me, I was riding here and I just started screaming because God spoke something to me. He said, um, one of the big things the enemy wants to challenge in every believer is their belief in my omniscience and my omnipotence. Yeah. Working. He does not want you to believe in his omniscience and his omnipotence. For those of y'all that don't know what those words mean, his omniscience means he sees and knows all. Can I get a talk back, church? We serve the God that sees and knows all. I remember in the Old Testament he talked about y'all got gods that have hands but they can't deliver. You got gods that have eyes but they can't see. They've got mouths but they can't speak. But aren't you glad that you have a God that sees and knows all? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not only is he, does he have, does he see and he knows all, but the other benefit that we have is that the enemy challenges us in the area of his omnipotence. He tries to convince us that Jesus is not all powerful. Tries to convince us that our God, Jehovah, is not all powerful. But I need to know, do I have about three people in here that know that our God is not just all knowing, but he is all Oh God, have mercy. Hey, wait a minute. I got, can I go one step further? He's not just all knowing. He's not just all powerful, but he's omnipresent. I got I, I got about four folk that back me up right there. I said he's omnipresent. That means he is where he is at all times. It doesn't matter, David said it like this. If I make my bed in hell, you are fair. If I ascend up into the high heights and take the wings of a dove, you are fair. It does not matter where we go. He is fair. God, I wish I had a church to praise him just a moment because he's all Always. Yes. 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 So, here, here, 
I told you we in a familiar passage, but let me work for a minute. So here we come to the place where it's just after he has done this miracle where he feeds 5,000 men, not to mention the women and children. See, they preach it wrong. They talk about that he only fed the 5,000. No, he didn't just feed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. He actually, it says he fed 5,000 men. Not to mention the women and children. God have mercy. Yeah. So if you even just had one woman for every man, you've guaranteed got 10,000 folks sitting up in, sitting up in the camp. Y'all not going to talk. Huh? But what if they got one or two children? We are now talking about about 50, at least 15,000 in the camp that he fed with two fish and five loaves of bread. That means he's a big God. That means he's a God that can do the impossible. Your God can do the impossible. But I need to preach to somebody and tell you that he's the God of the impossible. If you believe it, shout glory. Something about this tent. This tent is pulling a preach out of me tonight. He's the God of the impossible. Oh, yeah. Look around and tell somebody. I don't, I don't know if you've forgotten or not. He's the God of the impossible. Tell them. Tell them I don't know if you forgot, but he's the God of the impossible. Yes. And I'm going to see it. Yes. So. 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 He now finishes up the feeding. He's taught them and ministered to them. Not only did he feed them with natural bread, but he also ministered to them. And when he gets done ministering to them, the Bible said he now sends the disciples away. He says, disciples, y'all get in the ship and go to the other side. But watch this. I, I just want to put a pin here, and then we're going to ride on a little further. But what he does is he says, I'm going to send the crowd away. Y'all go get in the boat. Yeah. One of the reasons why he perhaps put, sent them to get in the boat and to send the crowd away, because the Bible speaks to us and tells us that they were thinking, the crowd was thinking about taking him by force and trying to make a king out of him. Yeah. But it was not yet Jesus' time. Talk back to me right there. Wasn't yet his time to rise to the throne, if you will. So he had to send them away so that they would not try anything crazy and put them in the crosshairs of the Roman government. But another reason, oh, I feel it right there. But another reason he sent them away, perhaps, is because he does not want their egos to get stroke too much that they get looked at and think themselves to be too much. We got a whole lot of folk in the body of Christ, especially standing behind the sacred desk, who got to get their ego stroke, who got to think that they're all that in a bag of chips. Sometimes he's going to have to send you out of the picture so that he can get the glory and God have mercy. So many preachers trying to get the glory that belongs to God. Do I have a church in here? Oh, it's not the preacher's job to get the glory. It's not the preacher's job to take the credit. It's his job to get the glory because he was the one that worked the miracle. All he did was use you as a part of the program. God, have mercy. What you ought to feel is honored that he chose to use you. Oh, I'm, every time I... Yeah. Every time I stand behind this sacred desk, I am humbled and I am honored yeah. that he decided to use me. Yeah. Ah, a mess the way I was. A mess the, the mess that I was. Jacked up like I was. He decided that he was going to take a jacked up man like me and turn me around and decide to use me to deliver his yeah. message, to deliver his glory. Maybe all of y'all been perfect all of your life. But for those of us who've been a mess, but well, wait a minute, can I talk here? Maybe you were not the one who are behind the pulpit. That's okay. You have been given a ministry of reconciliation. When you go into Kroger, you've got your pulpit. When you go to work, 
work every day. You've got your pulpit. When you're sitting with your family, you've got your pulpit. Now you ought to be honored that he's choosing to use you in his program. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. But then again, don't think more lowly of yourself than you ought to either. Just be grateful that he chose you. How many grateful folk do I have tonight that he chose you? Now, 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 I'm talking about the folk that know you didn't deserve to be chosen. Hey, know that if you really, if the curtains were really pulled back and some of the thoughts, some of the stuff you thought, not just what you said or did, but what you thought. Right. I don't have a talk back church right there. They got quiet on the bishop. Uh, I said some of the stuff you thought if the cur curtains were pulled back, you would not deserve to be used by God. But yet he looked beyond all of that and said, I still want to use you. Mm. And so now we have an enemy that wants to challenge his omniscience, our knowledge of his omniscience. A challenge, he wants to challenge our knowledge of his omnipotence and his challenge to our belief in his omnipresence. And so the Bible now says that when Jesus sends them away, it says it, they get down there about evening time and they strike out to go across the sea. They strike out to go across what well, some texts translate the sea, but really it's a big lake, but they're going across it. And Understand, it really wasn't a long journey. Oh God, can I work right there? It really was a journey, scholars say, of only about maybe five to six miles from one side to the other. But they left, pay attention, they left in the evening. Mm -hmm. They left in the the evening. Now let me let me just let me just bother something real quick, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible said when they got out there and they're rowing, they're rowing to go across to the other side, like he commanded them. They're rowing, and they're rowing, and they're rowing, and now in their rowing. They land in a storm. Talk to me. They land in a storm. Now, I want you to catch something. It wasn't because they were being disobedient. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. It wasn't because they were arbitrarily making a assessment or their own uh, 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 thoughts of what his will might be. Come on here. They weren't trying to figure out what his will might be. He expressly told them, get in the boat and go to the other side. Notice what I just said. He expressly told them, get in the boat. Go to the other side. But what do you do, ladies and gentlemen, when he tells you what to do and when you're obeying him, you find yourself smacked dab in the middle of a crazy storm. Ah, Preach long. What do you do when you do what he tells you to do? And see, that's this old conventional, this old conventional stuff that they're preaching on TV, talking about how wonderful your life is going to be when you serve the Lord and how great things are going to be. Let me help you right here. Sometimes the will of God is going to drive you right into the middle of a storm. Amen. Yes, yes. My brother, I heard last night when they were talking about that you had cancer. But doing the will of God, you didn't expect cancer to show up in your body. You didn't expect that storm. But doing the will of God, all you were doing was trying to mind your business and do the will of God the best you could. And here comes cancer trying to show up in your body. God have mercy. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Many times as you walk with God, there will be storm. Damien, do you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Many times when you're walking with God and you're doing your best, not saying you're going to be perfect, you're going to make some mistakes, but when you're doing your best, you're going to go right into some storm. Yes. You got it. Yes. 
this. Yeah. Yeah. How, see, now you got to deal with your emotions in those moments. Right. You got to deal with your emotions in those moments. Because now, watch this, let me work right here. Because if you really think about it, if the storm, now the Bible said the winds were contrary. Catch it, catch it, catch it. I said the winds were what? Contrary. Well, when you understand the word contrary, especially in the biblical sense, it means that the direction that they were going, the wind and the storm was coming in that from that direction. Talk to me. They're going this way. The wind is coming this way. So what does it make you do? You got to fight your way to get to where he told you to go. God have mercy. And I'm going to talk to somebody right here because you're going to be tempted to turn around and go back. Because at least I know on this side of things, if I, the storm is coming from this way, when I can't, took off, I took off from over here. So the easier route to go would just be to turn around and go back. Now I'm not always I'm not just talking about going back on God and giving up your relationship with him, but in the assignment that God has placed in your hand. Yeah. Bishop, it wasn't always easy when you had to work this building and work this work and you didn't have everything you need all the time and you had to trust God and storms started rising up against you, coming contrary to you. I'm sure you had moments where you wanted to turn. Right. Maybe I'm by myself. Maybe none of y'all have ever been there before where you said, forget this. This assignment looks a little bit too big for me. This assignment looks a little too hard for me. I don't think I'm going to be able to make this. Matter of fact, here's what we say. I'm over it. I'm done. Hey! We say stuff like, I'm over it. We say, I'm through. We say, bump this, I'm gone. We check out on the assignment because it's easier than dealing with what's coming contrary to us. But again, I remind you, I'd rather be in the will of God. I'd rather be in the place where his voice is than to turn back around. You're in more danger turning around than you are in going forward. Why are you in more danger? Because his word is enough to sustain you when you're doing what he said do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. His word is enough to sustain me when I'm doing what he says do. God have mercy. His word is enough, Daniel, to sustain you when you're doing what he told you to do. Somehow, some way, he'll show up. Don't let me get ahead of myself. Now, now, Understand, can I, can, I, can I just bother this for a second, Bishop? Right. Faith is built in steps and stages. Yes. Talk to me, y'all. Yes. I said your faith is being built in steps and in... Y'all got it. Steps and stages. Let me prove my point. Because in Matthew chapter number 8, the Bible said they were on the, on the sea and he was... In the boat. Y'all gonna catch me in a minute. Matthew 8 says that they got caught up in a storm and they thought they were about to be capsized and thought the water was gonna overrun the boat. And he was in the boat. He was right there with it. Come on here. Yeah. So now the fact that he was in the boat in Matthew chapter 8 and they had to develop their faith and deal with the fact that he was in the boat and he tells them, God, I feel this right here. And he and he gets up on the end. When they wake him up out of the back of the boat, he comes and stands on it. Y'all know the story. And he says, peace, be still. But ladies and gentlemen, in Matthew 8, he was on the boat. But in Matthew 14, or in Mark 6, or in John 6, because this text is in all three, all three uh, books, in any one of those, the fact is, in this text, he's not on the boat. Yes. Oh, have mercy. I told you, he builds your faith in steps and in stages. In Matthew 8, he was on the boat. But Matthew 14, he's not on the boat. In Matthew 8, he's 
in the boat. But in John 6, he's not in the boat. In Matthew 8, he's on the boat. But in Mark 6, he's not in the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now in Matthew 8, they learned that he was powerful enough to step out on the edge of the boat and speak to a storm and say, peace be still. And everything had to calm down. But what are you going to do when you are now out there in the middle of it? And when you're in the middle of it, he's not on your boat. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's not too far away. God, I feel a preach coming. He's not too far away. I told you the enemy wants to challenge your his omniscience in your mind, his omnipotence in your mind, and his omnipresence in your mind. But watch now, ladies and gentlemen. I feel it coming, Bishop. I feel it getting down in my belly. Lord, have mercy. But now watch, ladies and gentlemen, because the Bible now declares to us that when they get out there and he, they're struggling in the row. He's up on the mountain praying. Let me not break the stride here, but I got to give y'all something. Jesus was up in the mountain doing what? Praying. He was showing us the importance of the connection with the Father. Preach long. He was showing us the importance. Wait a minute. Some of us have got too worked up over stuff going on out there and we're moving too quickly. Praise God have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did now watch this. The Bible said, let me work this. The Bible said that they left in evening. And when they left in the evening, he was up in the mountain after he sent the crowd away. He was up in the mountain doing what? Praying. But then the text tells us that he saw them. Y'all should have shouted. I said, then the text said, he saw them. Let me say that again. The text said, he saw them. Hey, let me just make sure I touch this because I don't want you to miss it. Notice that the text then says, he doesn't make a move towards them until the fourth watch of the night. Watch that now. Watch that. Oh, have mercy. Oh, Bishop. They left in the evening. Yeah. But he doesn't make a move until the fourth watch. Yeah. Come on. Now, for some of y'all that might not mean much, but let me clear it up for you. Between 3 a.m. Uh, and 6 a.m. Yeah. is when he finally moved towards them. Y'all going to get me in a minute. I, 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 I see it. They left to go to the other side in the evening. So probably between somewhere about 6 p.m. and 9, 10, 10 o'clock p.m. We don't have a specific time, but let me just use evening as we know it. Somewhere in that time frame, they left to go to the other side. But he says he's watching them. Yes. But it says he's watching them. Yes. But he doesn't make a move toward them until between 3 and 6 in the morning. Do y'all have the picture yet? They left in the evening. He doesn't make a move toward them until the wee hours of the morning. Yes. Scholars will tell you that between 3 and 6 is the darkest time of the night. You know the old saying, the darkest hour is just before the break of day. That's it, just before the dawn. But ladies and gentlemen, evening time they leave. Short trip between 5 and 6 miles. Because of the storm, they only get about halfway. Now can you imagine? Now let me, I'm trying to paint this picture for you to really see it. All this time, Bishop, yes. they've been struggling and they've been toiling from evening time until three to six in the morning, and they've only made it. Y'all got it. Yes. Y'all got it. But in the whole time, he's been uh, watching. Yes. Yes. I think one of the first things. 
thing this shows us is that we got to be careful not to get so caught up in the extemporaneous stuff that goes on around us that we sacrifice the relationship with the Heavenly Father. Because what we do is when things happen around us, we make the mistake of trying to run after the stuff that is happening around us. They call us for this. They call us for that. They call you for this. They text you for that. And they, they need you. They need you. They need you. But ladies and gentlemen, sometimes when people think that they need you, they don't really need you. What they need is him. Yes. 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 Him. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to tell you there are people who are looking at you and they're trying to pull on you and it's challenging your time with God. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't let anything come between you and your time with God because you can accomplish more when you've been with Him. Lord, help me yeah. here. You can accomplish more when you've been with Him than you can without Him. I got to get out of here now, ladies and gentlemen. This thing messed me up because they were going across. And keep in mind that they were going across and the whole time he had his eyes on them. But wait a minute long. What are you talking about? I told you the devil wants to challenge his omniscience, his omnipotence, and his omnipresence. One thing that blew my mind when I thought about it was that the entire time they were on the, on the, on the water, he knew exactly where they were. They could have been over here to the right and had to turn. They could have been to the left and had to turn. Now, wait a minute. Y'all missing something. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Y'all gonna let me preach like I feel it tonight. Yeah. Watch this. There were no boat lights. Uh, okay. There were no lighthouses. No. Not talking. No. There were no lights on the water. Especially if it was storming out there. Yeah. We can reference that from Paul's storm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are y'all with me? When he said, when Paul said in, in, in the book of Acts, he said, I, I couldn't see, we couldn't even see the, not the moon or the stars because of the storm. So you know if it was storming, there was no way for there to be light out there. But aren't you glad that the eyes of our Savior are strong enough to see through any storm that you might be in? Do I have a church that will praise him out here? To praise him for the fact that his eyes are strong enough to see past any storm that you might be in. Somebody shout glory. 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 Hallelujah. I'm about to round this thing and come on home. But now the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus sees them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he goes walking toward them on the water. God. Yeah, he goes walking on the water. And the Bible says, and as he goes walking on the water, the Bible said he he would have passed by them. Y'all yeah, yeah. better catch me right here. He would have passed by them. He was coming so that he would have passed. Yes. Don't miss this moment right here. Yeah. That he would have passed by them. Oh. What are you saying, Long? He was walking faster. Then they were rowing. He was walking faster than they were rowing. I told you the enemy wants to challenge your belief in his omniscience, meaning that he sees all and he knows all. But ladies and gentlemen, he's taking you to the place. He's watching you. He sees where you are. Somebody get happy because he sees where you are. Somebody get happy because he knows where you are. 
the Lord. Bring that thing up in this rock. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Sing him home. He can show himself strong too. Somebody say yes, Lord. yes, Lord. He wants to show himself strong to somebody out here. And he's going to do it yes. in an unconventional way. Yes. I told you I wanted to preach tonight. Yes. Get ready. Get ready for an unconventional move. God's getting ready to give you an unconventional move. a challenge in your belief system. He wanted to challenge your, your belief in my omniscience. So let me show you. I know where you are. He wants to challenge. He wants to challenge your belief in his omnipresence just because Show me more! 
might not be comfortable in your candidacy. It might not be easy in your candidacy. He's going to have to pull you out of your comfort zone. But just know he's trying to show you more of his power.
Lord. Somebody ought to open up. Somebody ought to let go and let God have his way on tonight. Somebody's getting a breakthrough in this place. I dare somebody here. Amen. Why don't you do something for your good tonight? It's not for me, but why don't you do it for your good? Why don't you get out from where you're at? Come walk right down in front of this altar. Let us put our hands to heaven and begin to praise God. Come on, all over this tent. Everybody, let's come right down here. I dare you to shout. I dare you to praise God. I dare you to give God some glory. I dare you to remember every time that when you was in trouble, every time that you was in your trials, every time you was in difficulty, every time sorrow pain, every time you had a tragedy, every time that you faced something that you didn't know how to deal with, he showed up and he showed out. Amen. He got on your boat and everything and to hear what the said the Lord and take a back seat to his divine will in your life and you should praise him because he showed up. He showed up. I said he showed up. You should give him praise in this tent tonight. Come on, somebody. Woo! Nobody praise him God now. Come on, has he done anything for you? Has he ever helped you when it looked like that your situation was helpless? Uh, 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 Brother Michael, did he, did he help you when the news was bad? Uh, Keith, uh, did he help you when you were broken and downtrodden? Did he help you when you were sick and afflicted? Did he help you when you were busted and disgusted? And I'm telling you today, the man of God is going to set it. All he's got to do is step out and step in. And when he steps out on the water and steps into the boat and the trial and the trouble and the situation you're going through, he don't have to say, peace be still. The wind and the waves recognize his presence in your life and they have to obey what the Sabbath. Lord. So tonight, let's give God one more shout of praise for the victory.
and say thank you for being so vested in our lives. So much so that even when we're going through things, you watch us is on the sparrow. Well, we're grateful tonight that there's consolation in knowing that you've never stopped making intercession for your saints. To this present day, your blood cries for the mercy seat on the behalf of your beloved children. Lord, your eye still watches us. When, you, when we need you the most, you'll come down from your high and lofty place. Place your foot upon the bow of our ship. The old song says the anchor holds. Though this ship is back, the anchor still Although the sail is torn. Because what we've done, Lord, is we fell to our knees, facing the raging sea, cried out to you, you've been an anchor in the midst of the storm. Tonight we praise you for that in this moment. We thank you. As we look back at your unbroken record of thankfulness, we stand in this altar tonight firmly assured that the same God that has always rescued us in the time of storms is the same God that will rescue us in this storm we are in now. That last sickness didn't kill us. This sickness will not either. That last messy breakup didn't destroy us. This bad relationship won't either. The last time we went belly up and bankrupt, we may have been down, but we weren't counted out. And this time, we're going to declare like Job, we shall rise again. No matter what we go through and what we may face, we're reminded that you're getting ready to do something new, something fresh, something awesome in our hearts and in our lives and in our very present situation. And for that, we give you praise today. In Jesus' name, we seal it with a thank you. Amen and amen. Praise God. Come on, everybody, give Jesus a hand of praise. Man, is this man of God preach to no matter what? You may go back to your seats for just a moment. We're going to get ready to let you go. Uh, Bishop, y'all hang with us. We got five minutes till nine o'clock. Uh, Diana's wants to <laughs> let you know how grateful she is for you tonight. <laughs> Points where she's hiding her face. Ah. Uh, but she was going to tell you, if you'd have got here early enough, she wanted to tell you, make sure you cut it short tonight so we can make it to all you can eat ribs at Buddy's before they close. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, that How that work out? Well. It's, it's going to work. It's going to work. All right. Amen. Uh, Man, I tell you what, this man of God came out of the gate preaching tonight. I appreciate his obedience and willingness to do the will of God. Here's what I want us to do tonight. How many folks have been blessed by this word? Man, has this man not preached? Oh my God, come on, go to give God praise for the God. See, what some of you don't understand is that the prophet, the apostle, the bishop, 
the pastor, the minister, the man, the woman of God that stands in the pulpit and speaks into your life is a gift to you. Yes. It's God giving a gift to you. Trust me, folks. The only way that we can ever experience divinity is to experience it through the expression of the divine through human form. When God chooses to show Himself, He shows Himself through a man or a woman. He ain't burning bushes anymore. I, I hear uh, preachers all the time talk about fleece, uh, putting a fleece out. You know, listen, I hate to be the one to break the bad news to you. Uh, if you're putting a fleece out, you're never going to hear from God. Because God don't speak in wet and dry fleeces anymore. He speaks through the Holy Spirit in your heart. Yes, amen. He speaks through His servants to you. Yes, thank you, Jesus. So, Tonight, this man of God has been a gift to this body. And I want to ask you to do something. I want to ask you, let's be a gift back to Him and bless His ministry and His life financially. I want you to get together your best offering tonight. The very best you can do. Somebody should give $100 in this place tonight. Well, I guess, I guess that I, if I say God told me, it says somebody should give $100, I ought to be the first partaker in that. Amen. And if God has spoke to you to follow in that, do that. Be obedient to God. Be obedient to God. Now, I know Bishop Long accepts cash out and uh, we, we want to appreciate everybody that has joined us on the live stream tonight we love all of you we'll be back here live streaming on tomorrow 2 o'clock p.m. amen we love all of you God bless you what is it yeah tell, tell us this question cash sign D-R-F-L-O-N-G dollar sign D R F L O N G. That's the cash app. If you want to cash out, uh, that's that's easy for all of us. Uh, most of us. Everybody's 